Greetings, friends. This is Survival Doc. Today I'm going to talk about chili because chili is one of my favorite foods. Everybody seems to like chili. And chili is a food that is very easy to put up for long-term food storage. I'm talking about 25-year uh, shelf life, if you do it right. This is a 25-pound bag of organic red kidney beans that I bought from Whole Foods Market. I'm actually going to be making a three-bean three chili, so this is just one of the types of beans that I'm using. I'm putting the beans in these Mylar bags which I will seal with a hot iron, putting five pounds in each bag. And in each bag I will put a desiccant pack and a 300 cc oxygen absorber. These are the spices that I will be putting away for my chili. Here I have four 18 ounce containers of granulated garlic. I bought these from uh, Costco's. And I'll be putting these four in one of my Mylar bags. I'm using one gallon Mylar bags, by the way. I will be putting these three containers of chili powder in another bag. And I have five of these containers of chopped dried onions that I will put in another bag. The other spice that I'll be using is cumin. I've already put the cumin in a Mylar bag. And along with my spices and beans and other ingredients for my chili, I will be putting away sea salt. Now the sea salt does not require an oxygen absorber. I will put this in a plastic bag along with a uh, desiccant pack. In each of these others I will put a desiccant pack and an oxygen absorber and I will seal them in a Mylar bag with a hot iron giving them a 25 year shelf life. And I will discuss the recipe for my chili a little later on in the video. Here are some of the beans about ready to be sealed in the bags. Now my oxygen absorbers come 20 to a pack and once you open this pack they will start absorbing oxygen so you want to be ready to use all 20 of them very quickly. So you want to get everything ready. I want to get 20 of these bags ready. Here are my kidney beans over here. I have small red beans over here. I have black beans and the other beans that I'm putting away are the white northern beans. I'll be making three bean chili but I'm putting away four different types of beans so that we'll have a little variety and can use different beans at different times. Folks, it's time to get serious about long-term food storage. Many people are predicting food shortages within a year. Certainly food prices are going to be going up. Uh, we are right around the corner from, from food hyperinflation, uh, which means that uh, food is going to get a lot more expensive. So if you put a food away now when it's cheap, you'll be saving money in the long run. But even more important than that, if we have food shortages, which I am predicting at some point we will have food shortages and famine here in the United States. There will probably be food around, but the food will become so expensive that many people won't be able to afford it. And a lot of middle class people are going to be spending a lot larger portion of their income. They're going to have less disposable income because they're going to be spending all of their income on food, if they can get it. So if you've been pro procrastinating, put away your food storage supplies now. Don't wait. The oxygen absorber contents tends to kind of stick together 
it helps to activate it a little bit, shaking it up a little bit before you seal it in there. That way it just um, acts a little quicker, a little better. It isn't necessary to turn it over and iron both sides, but I do it just so I can check to make sure that I've got a good seal. You don't want to over iron it, and you also don't want to use an iron that's too hot, and of course you don't want to use it that's uh, too cool either. You want your iron just right. Now it varies from iron to iron. On mine the setting is 3, uh, but that will vary depending on your iron. Check the seal, make sure this is good. Voila! Here's my chili that I've put up for 25 year shelf life. Now, the ingredients are separated. I put away the spices separately from the freeze-dried tomatoes, separately from the dried beans and the other ingredients. Now before I've talked about Mylar bags. This is the Mylar bags I use for five gallon and six gallon buckets. These are 20 inch by 30 inch Mylar bags. Another way of doing it, I've started recently putting away food in the smaller Mylar bags. These are the one gallon size. And one thing I like about these is you can open the bag and just use the contents of one bag and leave the other contents sealed, I mean leave the other uh, foods that you have in other bags sealed. So you don't have to use such a large amount at a time. Now five gallon buckets are great. You can put these in five or six gallon buckets. You can put about four or five of these depending on how full you have them. So one option you have is to put your one gallon Mylar bags in five gallon buckets. Uh, another way to do it is with these four gallon square buckets. And I like the four gallon square buckets because they actually, because they're square, they actually are, take up less space when you're storing them, or in other words they use your space more efficiently because square buckets fit together more tightly than round buckets. Uh, and these are a perfect size to use for the one gallon Mylar bags. Here's something that if you don't have, you definitely want to look into if you, if you store food in uh, plastic pails of any size. Makes it a lot easier to open your, your buckets, especially the five gallon buckets, which can be very difficult to open. But this makes it easy to open your buckets without damaging the bucket or, or the lid. Now, what I like about these four gallon buckets, this is just salt, is you can put several of these one gallon buckets in there. As you can see, three fit in there perfectly with a little space on top if you want to add something else, like you can add a fourth bucket, other ingredients. Now, I put my chili fixings in here. And along with each bucket of spices, I put the chili recipe that I'm using. And the reason for that is when you open this bucket, or whoever opens it in the future, they have a nice little recipe here about how much of the spice to use with how many beans, etc. Now another thing that you want, of course, if you have if you sell items in plastic buckets, is you want a rubber hammer. 
to seal your buckets. And the proper way to seal it, not necessarily with these, but especially for the five gallon buckets, the proper way is to put your knee on the bucket and hit down each of the four corners and then make sure that the lid is on securely. All right, in this bucket, as you can see, I have um, my chili powder, cumin, garlic, salt, <clears throat> dried onions, plus some beans. Now, one thing I like about chili is chili is a very healthy food. It contains some very healthy spices like garlic, cumin, uh, chili powder. These are very healthy spices. If you look up the benefits for them, they are, they're beneficial for the circulatory system, for the immune system, and of course they make your food taste great. Uh, chopped onions. Also chili contains tomatoes, uh, another healthy food. Um, peppers. And chili also contains meat, which is very good. And beans. So in chili you're getting, it in, in the one dish, you're getting your meat, you're getting your carbohydrates, you're getting a lot of good spices. You can also add, if you have freeze-dried corn, you can add uh, your freeze-dried corn to the chili. You can vary the recipe. What I use is actually a three-bean chili recipe. I put away four different kinds of beans. I put away organic uh, red kidney beans, small red beans, black beans, and white northern beans. Uh, and anytime I make recipe, I'll use three or four of these. I use a three bean recipe and I'll use three of these different types of beans. Now if you'll notice I have my chili boxes marked chili fixings A, chili fixings B, I also have a C. All right, that way if you need to divide up your food, say if you're going to take part of your food to your bug out location or to another a friend's house or you're going to give some of your food to a family member. You can just give them an A bucket, give them a B bucket, give them a C bucket, and give them a D box, and they've got all the ingredients that they need in the right proportions to make their chili. In my A buckets, I put the chili recipe along with the spices, chopped onions, salt, and if I have room, additional beans. In the bee bucket, I have nothing but dried beans. In this one, I have red kidney beans, I have black beans, and small white beans, or northern beans. If you're wondering where I get these buckets, these four gallon buckets, I have a friend who works at Whole Foods Market. Uh, these are food grade buckets. Uh, food comes in them. I have a friend who saves these for me. So if you have access uh, to a restaurant or a grocery store like Whole Foods Market, you might be able to get these buckets. I get these for free. And if you don't have a source for these four gallon buckets, of course you can always use the five gallon buckets. Here are the other ingredients that I put away for my chili. I have this marked uh, C. So for a complete set of chili fixings, you need an A bucket, a B bucket, B is just beans, or actually probably two B buckets, and a couple of C boxes. This is just salt again. Salt is cheap. There's no reason not to put away a lot of salt. All right, these are the freeze-dried ingredients that I bought for my chili. These are Thrive Foods. My recipe calls for green chili peppers. These are freeze-dried, 25-year shelf life. My recipe also calls for tomato powder. Again, freeze-dried. Tomato dices, freeze-dried and of course the beef. Now here I have cooked roast beef uh, from Thrive. You can also get uh, ground beef, freeze-dried ground beef, and of course ground beef is uh, desirable for chili. 
Uh, what I don't like about their ground beef, though, is their ground beef has corn in it. Ground beef is high in fat, and fat is not a food that's easy to put away for long-term food storage because fats go rancid. Right, so for their ground beef, they add uh, some corn ingredients because corn provides an oil. All right, now they also have um, cooked roast beef, which is actually little dices of roast beef, and the ingredients on this can is simply roast beef and salt. So this, this roast beef does not contain corn. This is what I'm actually preferring to put away for my chili recipes because I don't want the added corn. Again, this is freeze dried. This is cooked. Uh, when you make your chili, what you want to do is, of course, you want to soak your beans overnight because that reduces the cook time. All right, freeze dried foods cook very rapidly. Once your beans, uh, your beans are soaked, you can add all of your ingredients together, your soaked beans plus all of your uh, freeze dried ingredients according to the recipe and the proper amount of, of water and bring it to a boil and boil it for a little while until all of the freeze dried foods are completely uh, hydrated and the beans are completely cooked and voila you've got chili. But instead of uh, some chili recipes called to have uh, chili call, it, call for it to be cooked for hours and hours and hours um, and uh, the problem is during an emergency you may have be short in energy. Maybe you've got plenty of wood to burn or whatnot. Maybe you might not be short in energy. But in case you are short in energy and you want to conserve your energy, you can reduce the cooking time greatly by soaking your beans overnight first. Now one thing I like about freeze-dried foods is freeze-dried foods are they're instant foods. Uh, most of them you can eat right out of the can. Of course, you don't want to eat peppers right out of the can. But uh, most of the foods, uh, like the fruits and the vegetables, you can eat them right out of the can. Or you can just soak them in water using very little energy. Even with this beef here, this beef is cooked. Uh, you can actually eat this beef right out of the can. Uh, what I would do is I would soak it in water a little while. Freeze-dried food are preferred way for long-term food storage for many foods like meat. This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced. The chili recipe that I have, um, I got from Thrive, uh, the maker of these freeze-dried foods. Uh, and the reason I use that one, of course, is because it is a recipe using freeze-dried foods, so it tells you the right amount to use of your freeze-dried diced tomatoes and your freeze-dried beef and your freeze-dried tomato powder, uh, etc. So it's just a lot easier recipe to use uh, for your freeze-dried foods. And what I'll do, because uh, I know I'll be asked for it, is I'll post the recipes that I'm using uh, in the description uh, portion, in the, in the description box uh, beneath this video.